Hello, welcome. Uh, my name's uh, Adrian Minari, and this is my daughter, India. Hi. Obviously, we're from Minari Wines in Heathcote, uh, Victoria, Australia. Um, we're here to uh, give, tell you a little bit about ourselves and uh, to show you some of our wines and uh, also to uh, allow you to look at uh, how, what, how we present our wines at our cellar door. First of all, uh, just a little bit, little, little bit about myself. Um, myself and my wife Deborah uh, came here in 1992. Uh, my, we were both former school teachers uh, who decided we needed a bit of a change. Um, uh, Deborah was born in the city. I was born not too far from here, about uh, about 50 k's away. So I've re in a sense returned back to my roots. So as uh, school teachers, uh, we decided to have a change, and we moved up here, as I said, in 1992. Uh, I think India was about five, our son Beauregard was about eight. Uh, so we, at that stage we had a, uh, uh, we had a very historic uh, homestead. Uh, the homestead was uh, built in about 1865 um, and uh, it was uh, originally a sheep station of around 5,000 acres. Um, and uh, we are now on 57 acres of that property, uh, of which we have around 18 acres uh, under vine. Um, I think uh, over the years uh, we decided that things were getting a little bit too tough for, for, for me particularly as a school teacher and I think and I resigned from the education department about 2000 uh, to concentrate on here. So we'd had, at that stage we'd had a cellar door, um, not where we are now but in another building, uh, what we call our grain shed uh, which is now our packing room. Uh, and then we decided to move down to the uh, to the original stables as where uh, and that's what we're speaking in to you from now and India will show you a little bit about our, um, our cellar door which as I said is uh, was the regional stables um, yeah. uh, yes so I think I've have I said enough that's been very good very okay. good introduction right. uh, you can tell well, the you're the school teacher ways oh, well, there you go. Um, and a little bit about today today's session we'll go for about 35 or 45 minutes uh, we love uh, interactivity so um, the reason I've got my laptop in front of me is because we hope you will um, comment, ask us some questions, don't be shy, it's always a bit more fun when people are engaged. Uh, we're going to share a bit about our, um, yeah, Dad's um, added a bit about already how we came to be here. We're going to talk about Heathcote, which is our region. I'm going to give you a little tour of the cellar door um, and then we're going to settle in inside for a tasting of our uh, five wines that Daniel Lambert Wines has uh, landed for us in the UK. Very exciting for us. Absolutely. I believe he's already visited five accounts. Thank you very much for your support, those five accounts. I wanted to say hello uh, and thank you to Chester Wines, Tom Anson Wines, Grape and Grind, love the name, uh, Winchcomb Wines and Harris Wines. So thank you very much. I also think uh, that uh, customers in Devon are going to get a visit today. Mm. Oh, nice. Well, yeah, it's your night, so and tomorrow. Of course, you know what happens uh, when we're able to uh, send some more wine uh, to different countries? We, we get to visit. We have to, we have to visit. Yes, we, we, must. To, we must. We must. So uh, that would be uh, something to look forward to. Yes. So we need you all to mm. list our products so we can come and visit you personally. Um, because we haven't been on a holiday in a while. No, no not at all. A um, little bit about me, I came back to the business, obviously grew up here, moved away for university, um, started working for a bigger wine company called Perno Ricard Winemakers, you might be aware of them. Um, I was a wine ambassador based in Sydney, nationally, a national role, uh, which was lots of fun, really good opportunities. Um, made some really good relationships with the uh, winemakers across the, the whole group, which was wonderful. Spent some time in Rioja um, at Campo Viejo, which I'm sure you're familiar with. And uh, did a vintage in the Napa Valley at Mom Napa. And then came back here in 2018 for my first vintage with my, my old man. Uh, it's been a wonderful learning experience. Yes, of course it is. <laughs> and we're, uh, we're pushing forward and uh, we're really happy with what we're achieving. So we'll show you a little bit in the cellar door in a minute and when we taste the wines. So having just, just to finish off on what India's just said, then of course, uh, uh, obviously my wife and I are very proud of uh, what India uh, has achieved here with us uh, and, and the changes that she's helped us to uh, introduce and make. Uh, but also it's uh, very important for us because uh, Din's the next generation. 
and uh, we, as parents, we're always uh, are very in business, always very anxious about what uh, what's going to happen when we all uh, decide to um, go to the big sky. And uh, in this case, of course, uh, we know that India uh, and of course our son um, will be able to uh, to take over uh, over the family business, which uh, we're really thrilled about. Very yeah. good. Okay. Serious stuff out of the way. Yes. Um, so you, we've told you a little bit who we are. Um, we're going to give you some context. Where are we? We're in Heathkit. Uh, well, we could perhaps just to go, go to the look at that map, I think. It'd okay. be a lot easier to, to talk about that. Unless, um, yeah, that's fine. Uh, well, I'll just start by saying that um, Heathkit is in Victoria, which is in um, the south southeastern state. Um, Heath, uh, Victoria is the smallest state in Australia, but we have the most number of wine regions so we are very lucky we are and i think the great thing about victoria is uh you know we, we we're dead center in victoria so we can we can travel an hour in each direction uh, north south east or west uh we go south we're at the we're at the sea um if we go north we're in this in the uh in the, in the ski slopes um and of course we've got wonderful uh, reservoirs around uh, yeah. lots of water and uh hiking and it's so uh, and I think, I think that, and that shows the diversity of, of, of our particular region. So we're very lucky to be in a, uh, a, a, a very um, quickly recognised uh, premium wine growing area. Yeah. Uh, but we are one of, would you say, 14 uh, wine regions in, in, in Victoria. Uh, and they're all very, very diverse in styles. Yeah. Good. Okay. Yeah, very good. Uh, you can also perhaps see uh, that we're sitting uh, outside a little sunroom in our, our cellar door uh, in front of our... Uh, one and our older section of, of vines and you can see by uh, by the luscious growth at the moment we've had a very good very good spring uh a good rainfall uh beautiful cool, cool evenings uh, we're looking we're looking uh, very good to have some very well balanced wines uh produced uh, next year um but again uh as you can see they're looking uh, very lush and lovely and green so things that things are going along very smoothly for us at this stage the vines behind us are Shiraz. Shiraz. Mm. Uh, we grow Shiraz and Cabernet, quite traditional here. Shiraz and Cabernet on the property. And up until recently, we've also had Merlot and Malbec. So uh, you'll taste our schoolhouse red uh, in the future, but we'll show it to you today. And that is our sort of our, I've been calling it a field blend a bit, but mm. it, traditionally mm. we make a blend every year. It varies from year to year. And this particular uh, year, 2015, we did a, a blend of the four grapes, um, which is, you know, everything and, that we've grown. And now that we've uh, no longer, uh, we're having no longer uh, having Merlot and a small amount of Melbic, uh, we've grafted that onto Sangiovese. And uh, next, uh, uh, this year, we'll do our a proper first uh, vintage of Sangiovese. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, that uh, schoolhouse blend uh, that's always been a schoolhouse red, which has always been a blend, Will slightly change yeah but it's mm. always changed yeah. from year to year Absolutely. and that's yeah. the beauty of that we mm. make the best the best blend we can with what we've got and uh, just briefly uh just mentioning the word schoolhouse red um, as to why we we chose that name i think it's quite interesting i've already alluded to the fact <coughs> that deborah and i were both school teachers uh the road behind us uh is uh, actually called schoolhouse lane uh, originally it was uh, morris's lane which was the person who built the start their property in 1865 uh, but there was a small school place at East Nosley, which is uh, a little, about 10 k's up the road, uh, and that's why they changed the schoolhouse red. So it made it made a very good choice for us, being former school teachers, being on Schoolhouse Lane, to, to have a name uh, Schoolhouse Red. Very hmm. good. Um, shall we move shall on? Shall we into, move inside? Yes, I think that might be good. All right. So I'm going to take the camera. Dad's going to take you on a little tour. Uh, and then we'll have a look at Heathkit region on the map. Yes. So I'll follow you. Okay. Okay. Alright, I'm good. Alright, all good? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Don't forget to, uh, there's our cellar. Don't forget to uh, send us some comments so we know you're there and you're tuned in. Yeah, we haven't made you fall asleep. Uh, so this is our, our main... Our That's main my region. jigsaw puzzle. This is our main, main area here, so we're able to take uh, groups of, say, parties of 10, 8 to 10 uh, on this, this area, plus another six or so on the, on the, on the, uh, the living room area, if you like. 
Uh, this is at, at our cellar door, uh, bar, sales area. Um, and uh, over here to India's right, we have another uh, another small area where we can uh, we can do sit down tastings. And because of COVID, as you all know, uh, that's been a high priority here that we've had to sit people down uh, and have formal tastings. Um, that's hopefully going to change soon. But that's how we've geared our cellar door to this particular structure. We've quite enjoyed the sit down tastings. Oh, it's it's, um, it's yeah. much more intimate for the customers. You get a really good experience hear the stories. Let's go outside for a little yes. moment and we'll come back to the map. Uh, out here is uh, our new, um, our new uh, this, is, this is the star of the show by the way. Oh, there he is. We forgot about him. Hello. Uh, this is our, our new area basically. Um, we've just, uh, we've decided that we want to expand our, uh, have a bit more diversity in our cellar door. And uh, we're uh, in the process of uh, establishing a cafe, a small cafe in this area here. Um, uh, so we've still got a few more things to do, but um, it's certainly uh, nice and light here. Uh, and at the moment we're uh, able to provide coffee. All right, down to the nitty gritty. Now over here, uh, we, am I over here? Yeah, that's okay. good. Uh, over here, we've just actually got a map for you to make it a bit easier. Uh, well, the question before was, uh, where, where are we? Well, we know this is Australia, it's a really big place. We know that the south, we're the southern state, not the most southern. Uh, but as you can see, the state of Victoria, and we said we've got 14 diverse areas across that area there. Um, this is basically, uh, see, so Heathcote is right in the centre of, sorry, the centre of Victoria. Uh, here we've got a map of the Heathcote region. It's quite large, it's probably 72 kilometres from the south to the north. Um, we're approximately uh, here, and we're right, again, we're very fortunate to be in the centre of, uh, of the Heathcote region. Now, if I can just quickly uh, tell you a little bit, a bit about the geology, uh, and I think that will help you to, to, uh, to, to define our style, if you like. Uh, if we go to the south, down here, um, we, f we find that the soils down there, uh, particularly the more granitic soils, uh, basically coming from weathered uh, granite, uh, granite hills, and also um, granite boulders that have been moved down the glacial age, there's a big uh, glacier that came down, came down that way, through here, pushed a lot of rubble down, a lot of big rocks, granite rocks, so all that weathering and so forth produced those very sandy granitic soils. Uh, I should also say that it's a little bit cooler down there and there's probably a little bit more rainfall. So the wine style is a little bit lighter um, and uh, a bit more uh, linear, I suppose. Uh, and then we come, let's say the best area to last. When we go to the north, and here we've got uh, lots of, probably uh, lots of uh, volcanic uh, action. So lots of uh, 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 very uh, heavy loam deposits. The soil up there, topsoil is very deep. Uh, so you get very finely structured soils, uh, very deep, uh, which, um, and, and they're very lucky because uh, they have uh, supplementary irrigation uh, because that, that soil type is very, as I said, very fine structured uh, and, it can, and, and, it, and the water depletion can occur very quickly. Uh, and they, so they can dry out and get under stress very, very quickly in, our, in those hot conditions. And of course, it's a, a little bit hotter up there uh, and, uh, and less rainfall. But they're very lucky because, not this lake, not the lake, they're just pretend lakes, but there's a big, big reservoir over here called the Ranga Basin. And originally, the uh, water was pumped across that line from that, from that source up to here to a place called Rochester, which was a, a heavy uh, dairy industry. And that, that looked after that industry. So what's happened is that somebody from down here, this area here, has been able to extend that, um, in fact, to here, extend that line down to this point here, which has given all these vineyards access to irrigation water. That continues all the way down to around, around this this point here, and stops. So this is all potentially uh, irrigated uh, vineyards from the Wanga Basin, and from down this point here, from just north of us, further down is all unirrigated. So they have access to water, we have access to water, but it has to come from the sky, 
and we have to store it naturally, and we have to have infrastructure to allow that water to be deposited out into the vineyard. So that's the big difference. Now, coming back to the centre region, north, south, granitic soils, volcanic loam. In the centre, we believe in here that we have a lot more complex soils. We have, uh, it's all based on a, um, an area of uh, what we call limestone, um, greenstone. Uh, rock is 550 million years old. Uh, but on top of that, because of various uh, volcanic action, and in our area here we've, got, we've had two plate movements on either side, which is a very narrow, very narrow bed, aren't even probably half a kilometre. Uh, so we've had two tectonic plate movements, we've had a, a different amount of uh, rich or minerals deposited, things like quartz, uh, ironstone, um, shale, and, uh, so, and we've got a big mixture of soils. But the soils in here have got a bit more, a bit more friable. Uh, and I think that makes it uh, so that we've got, uh, and they're more ju what we call duplex soils, uh, dark uh, red, red soil over yellow or, or, or red clay. But the soils aren't particularly deep. This water has also been underwater. So we have sedimentary material, volcanic uh, material. So as I said, we believe that where we are here, these wines are far more complex without being disrespectful to the north or the south. Uh, but uh, so we find that they're much, um, much more structured, uh, more fruit driven, and, uh, and, and we were able to get some lovely, lovely supple tannins uh, coming, coming out of those soils. And we're also in a bit of a microclimate here. This is very open and flat, in what we call a treeless range, uh, because all the water from here drains down there, and all the water from here drains that way to Equilock. So, um, uh, it's quite a it's quite a large area. It's not as it's not as wide uh, north, uh, east and west this way, uh, but there's um, but most of the expansion is is through the centre. Yeah, it's probably about um, eighty kilometres from south to the north. Seventy two. Okay, mm. very good. Mm. And um, what twenty k east uh, or west? Probably no, it'd be more than twenty k. No, it'd be probably thirty. Yeah. Yeah, thirty forty k's, thirty k's. A bit hard, I can remember now. But, uh, but there's not, yeah, there's not much over here, of course. It's, it's just a, a little bit over what we call Grain Town. Uh, in fact, mm. uh, just to the side, that's where my mother was originally from. When she came? From, from Italy. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and so just like about bringing it back to Victoria again, yes. behind you, um, and Heathkit on the region, just want to reiterate that we're, we're far, far enough inland to... Uh, have some really nice, uh, like a small continental effect. So yes. cool nights, which is one of the keys for Heathkit. Um, but we're also in a sort of a valley uh, close enough to Melbourne, the, the bay, that we get a little bit of moderating, um, moderating cool, cool breezes up the valley too. Well, the thing is that too, there's a big water supply here called Lake Epilock. So we're, we're here. This is, only, uh, this is only 10 minutes away. So we get, we get an effect from that, uh, those hot winds going over that cool area, which also helps to moderate our, our climate over here. But as we all know, we, we, we want to have a nice, long, uh, cool, uh, uh, warm day, cool nights for the summers, so that we can keep that balance between sugar and acid. Um, and I think that's, that's another reason it contributes to, to our particular wine style, where we, we're looking for wines that are, are particularly well balanced. Well balanced and those more elegant styles. Um, and well structured wines. I think the well structured wines come from our microclimate and our soil type. Um, then obviously, and, and the, the, the region does generally produce lovely soft tannins. Um, there, there have been producing some more full or robust uh, wines, uh, big, quite big in alcohol, uh, which is still still running at the moment, and there's still this perception that, that that's the main style of Heathcote. Uh, unfortunately, I, I don't take that view, and I think India does, does the same thing. Uh, so it's, it's more about providing, for me, more elegant, well-structured, well-balanced wines. And hopefully you'll see that in our, in our flight that um, one of the wines that Daniel has, has taken in showing you at the moment. Very um, good. Okay. I've got a question. Yes. Who's this guy? Uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, yeah, that's a younger version of myself. And, the and Lumberjack. Lumberjack. The Lumberjack that's my mother. Mm, that was saved in 1995, I think. Uh, and this, this is our house over here. As I said, uh, we're in a very nice little spot here. We've got uh, Ladies Creek uh, running down the back. Um, as I said, this was the, one of the original homesteads. There's two. This is one of two. 
uh, and generally would around a 5,000 uh, acre, acre um, uh, area of land. Well, mainly sheep and grazing. All right. Mm. Excellent. Let's okay. settle in for the tasting. Is there any, are there any questions? That, from, no, from no questions yet. We'd like is to... anybody watching us? Yes, a few people are watching. Okay. We'd like to encourage you to um, say hello to us, post a comment, um, give, send us a question, something you want to know about Minari Wines or Victoria or Heathcote re region. So, Dad, I'm going to get okay, you to go and sit down. Sit down in the corner? Yep, just watch the bottle of wine I put on the ground. Yes, I've got it. I'm going to set up here. While India is, while India is setting up, uh, and you might be able to see that behind me, uh, actually, first of all, we have the range of wine that, uh, uh, that Daniel is uh, introducing into the UK, uh, which we can talk about in a moment. But in the background, um, you might be wondering why these uh, these particular prints um, uh, are, are important. Uh, well, our labels uh, came from um, from the original Italian uh, lira stamps or airmail stamps that came out in the 70s, used only for, uh, for airmail. And it was my grandparents who obviously were born in Italy, and uh, my grandfather came out in 1921, and not not they had the stamps then, but uh, the, that's how we've derived derived our label. And they're basically images that set out from the Italian Post uh, to the to the Vatican, and the images of the Sistine Chapel. And uh, if you see to above India, uh, that 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 woman there, the, the uh, what do they call them again? Um, Delph a Delphic oracle. Delphic oracle. oracle. Uh, she's she's our, on our Ladies Pass label uh, as uh, as our main feature, and uh, I've forgotten where she's coming from now. Uh, but they are just two prints showing the, the base of, 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 those, of those stamps. We're all coming from the Sistine Chapel, and I'm sure you've all been there and you understand what we're talking about. So basically, just to finish up on that, it was my my parent, my grandparents that were receiving letters back in those uh, 70s uh, from, from the Italian network from relatives, and, um, and uh, that was their really only form of communication. So that's, uh, that's how we started with our, uh, with our stamp label and how that we ended up with um, with these images. Okay. Great overview. Mm -hmm. um, we do have a question. Oh, here's the stamps behind India. Which you, uh, yep, you, you can, can see. see that over my shoulder. Yes. So uh, we've, we've, I think we've used about five or six of those images. But, but we'll you, if you all know the Pope, don't mention it. Okay, because uh, we might be in trouble. <laughs> um, well, they're a lot closer over there. Well, they so are. So I said they know. might have the Pope. You never know. Ooh, who knows? Uh, we do have a question from the floor. Yeah, good. If you were to match your climate to a European region, which region would be the closest? Probably Rhone. Yeah. Rhone or not quite Bordeaux, but thereabouts. Probably yeah. more Rhone. And an interesting point about that is that uh, we've uh, Heathcote is, is, is a bit more familiar with those varieties, uh, and and that's generally what is planted throughout this place. We've got obviously Shiraz or Shiraz. Yeah. Uh, we've got uh, white varieties like um, uh, like the Masan and Roussan. Uh, in the region, in not the region, sorry, yeah. in the in the region. Um, Grenache, of course, is making it making yeah. a big stance at the moment. Um, what else we've got for we the road? Yeah, we can. Um, well, in terms of Mediterranean, mm. also what's leading a charge is Italian uh, varieties. Mm. Uh, Barbera, Nebbiolo, Sangiovese, Nero Avola. Whites like Fiano, Vermentino, um, Greco. Greco. Um, what else is there? No, that's pretty good. Is it? Good overview. Viognier. Yes, of course, yes. Viognier yes. is very popular in Heathcote. You can make it in a variety of styles. There's some table wines, um, which are quite, well, traditional, as you'd expect. Mm. Um, and then there's some that are making a little bit leaner style, which I would prefer. Well, we do, and uh, that's always a constant battle. Um, as I said, uh, the region does produce, or has produced, big, full-bodied uh, styles. Uh, I had, had a gentleman the other day that uh, commented on the fact that uh, he had a 17.5 Jurif, and uh, the state the comment oh, was I think that Jurif's called um, Petit Syrah. Uh, Syrah. Petit Syrah, is it? Is it? Or is it? Oh, I'm not too sure. And that, and that it was not as robust as something from Rutherglen. Uh, well, I would have thought that 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 particular wine should have gone into, into a fortified myself, but certainly we uh, we don't we don't uh, we don't dislike it. But what I will to be positive, I will say that um, 
uh, it, it, this region can take more heavily uh, uh, alcohol wines. So we can get up to even 15% and it still can remain relatively well balanced uh, compared to a lot of uh, a lot of other areas. Um, yeah. But that is not a style that we're pursuing. As I said, we're all about elegance, balance and structure. And fruit and fruit driven wines, it's really important for us. So we have uh, concentrated on low, con um, on low yields. Uh, the vineyard we were sitting in front of before, probably at its best yields at around three quarters to, to a tonne, to the acre. Uh, on our new side, on the on the north side of New Block, we, we up, we're up to one and a half to two tons. So we, we firmly believe that uh, that's why our yields aren't particularly high, uh, and sometimes our vintages uh, or varieties we're not we're not looking at huge numbers. Somewhere anywhere between maybe 250 cases to 500 cases, uh, and that's about it. So yeah. um, now that we've uh, we've we we sunk a, a board just recently. Uh, and we have a we have a, a, a small de desalination plant that's hopefully going to allow us to be a little bit more consistent in our yields, um, and hopefully uh, that's what we'll see in the next few years. Do you, do you know we've been talking for twenty seven minutes? Uh, no. We've got to crack onto the wines. Okay, crack onto the wines. Um, okay, can you introduce it. We're going to taste the Vermentino to start. Uh, as we uh, alluded to earlier, we don't grow the white grapes here. We bought them from a vineyard about 25-30 minutes north of us. Uh, yes. And uh, they're a family that's very well known for growing Italian um, varietals. Um, so we wanted to give this one a go. This was the first year we made a Vermentino. Yep. So we're pretty happy with that. And we might also say that uh, we originally had some Chardonnay here, um, but unfortunately I grafted over three different clones several years ago, um, but unfortunately the material, the assigned material that I had uh, was carrying two, two nasty viruses uh, and consequently over those several years we, we were losing the assigned material. Con and also uh, consequently we were, we were left with the, uh, the rootstock, the Chardonnay rootstock, which I don't know what client it was because we didn't plant it, um, but we ended up making another Chardonnay uh, which we call the Resurrection. Um, and uh, we still have intentions of, uh, of removing that block at some point uh, to try, and that's why we've been experimenting with uh, Vermentino for, um, and uh, Gardenia, so that we, we, we like to put a variety that's more suitable here, uh, and that's, uh, yeah, that's something we're working towards at the moment. Thing. But our Chardonnay was more like a Chablis style, uh, really lightly oaked. Um, you know, we, they were smart wines, I felt. Uh, and we, 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 we may well do another one. But we've gone to Italian variety to, to keep their lineage, if you like. Yeah, um, um, and also, um, as Heath, Heath gets started, it's name on Shiraz, mm. but we're quickly becoming known for the Italian star, uh, grapes here. Mm. So let's taste. Yes. Um, this Vermentino, <clears throat> where an Italian Vermentino might be, I think, a bit more savoury. Mm. Ours is a fruit-driven style. Ours is very much that lime, citrus, pithy notes, you know, the rind under the skin. Um, although it has a bit of a flinty at the moment, does, a bit so of minerality. Uh, and I think that that's something, that minerality is something that comes through all the wines, actually, reds, reds and whites, uh, which I think is, is contributed to the, the soil types, as we mentioned before. It's quite a good wine mm. for the morning. Mm. It is, just to uh, remind you, 8.30 in the morning here in, in Heathkit. Mm. Um, so it's a good breakfast. Breakfast wine, as um, mm. someone's commented on the page. <laughs> uh, the thing that we do do with this wine is a bit of extended batonage just in the stainless steel tank. So that that lees stirring in the tank after fermentation has really added to the mouthfeel and the texture of this more, wine. A bit more creaminess too. It's got it? it's got a bit more yeah palate mm. weight to mm. it. Um, although it finishes with a really nice. Um, line of acidity, mm. which just drives the wine through the finish. Which is a uh, hallmark of all of our wines. Yep. It's very so important. Even the red wines, you'll notice when you taste them, which I know you will, uh, really like a tight acidity um, driving the wine. Which makes them perfect for, for food. Um, and certainly, uh, as we all know, um, that acid contributes to the structure. And uh, and good, it also lends to good, uh, good salary. So um, um, we think that's an important part of, of our winemaking. But this uh, is. A I was just looking at the TA. It's um, six. Six. 
Full stop? 6.02. 6.02. That's pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, pH, I think, is about 3.3, 3.4. Maybe you snatch off that. Um, yeah, kind of see it off the top of my head. Okay. Head there. So I want to be that one. Okay. It's all good. Okay. Moving on. But you didn't taste it. Yes, I did. I, I, did I, you? You I, just I, pretended. Well, I, I'm smelling it, but it smells beautiful. But it's well white, well weighed wine, and uh, as India said, it's good, good texture. So um, nice, refreshing style. Really nice acid lime, as India said, and um, uh, it's been very popular here. And I also might add that we're coming, unfortunately, coming to the end of that vintage, and we're about to release uh, 2020, uh, which is a similar, similar style. Uh, similar flavours. Yes. Um, so by the time Daniel reorders, you'll mm. be on to the 2020 vintage, exactly. um, which we're very impressed with. So drink up. Mm. Okay. Can you please pass me the schoolhouse? Schoolhouse? Yeah. Can you do it on us? I will. Um, we talked about the history behind the brand, the, the schoolhouse, a little bit uh, previously to now. Um, this is our, our blend. We started um, with a Shiraz and a red blend and so mm. 28 or so years later uh, we still have that. Very, uh, very attractive nose, very inviting. Mm. Very aromatic isn't mm. it, very fragrant. Mm. This is 47% Merlot, um, tw uh, yeah 27% Shiraz, 16% Cabernet and 10% Malbec. The Shiraz is actually from the Upper Golden uh, which is a little bit of a cooler region about 45 minutes from here. Dad was leasing a vineyard, um, so we took the opportunity to purchase those grapes as well. So they were managing used, it. Yeah. I, used to, I used to make their wine for them too. So it was a, we did that for about 10, 10, 12 years, I think now. Um, but very different to to, to, to Shiraz comes from here. More cool climate. A little bit more but, that white pepper spice coming through, yeah. and that sort of lifts the wine as well. I can I can smell the, uh, the Melbourne in here. It was only 10%. It's amazing how much uh, 10%, 5%. And contribute to to a wine. I think we're all we're all aware of that. Uh, and I'm probably I'm glad that Daniel took the schoolhouse because I think I think it's a bit more more European in, in, yeah. in style. I think you're probably a more appreciative would be more appreciative of, of a blend than than generally uh, domestic market. Uh, a lot of our domestic market don't quite understand uh, what the point of it all is. They just want to straight Shiraz, straight Cabernet. But uh, as we all know, uh, we've got some wonderful different components in those. Yeah. In those varieties, and if we can put them all together correctly, uh, we can we can we should be able to see a little bit of everything in that wine. Yeah, and I can smell the can. I can smell smell the Melbic on the, the nose. The Cabernet is coming through a lot stronger and now. And I can I can taste the Melbic on the finish, and it's a really aromatic uh, variety. Uh, unfortunately, we had only had a small amount which we grafted over, as I said to Sangiovese. But unfortunately, our problem here was it's a very fleshy berry. Uh, it gets to about 30 and a half. It's not like a Mendoza. Just about 30 and a half and stops. Uh, it's got a big leaf, uh, just doesn't want to sim photosynthesize anymore. Uh, and of course, the, because it's so fleshy and the thin skin, the birds love it. But the tannins are very mm. much that lovely sort of chalky, velvety tannins. We take mm. quite great pride in um, the mouthfeel mm. of the wines and that the, the finish. Mm. So this is a very a well-rounded wine, but it's got just enough texture there to well, um, I, I've done a terrible thing. I've just cleaned the teeth, oh. so I've just got to be looking, rookie. Because um, I, you know, wanted my breath to smell really nice. For the, the camera. camera. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've done that. Anyway, it's ruined the wine, but it's a, <laughs> it's still a lovely wine. It's a, it's a little fleshy. And it's got really a lot lot going on in the wine, really a lot. Um, but again, it's not it's a, not a big mother, not a big in your face wine. It's elegant, structured, and so, fruit driven. Surprisingly. Fourteen and a half percent. Yeah, and, um, yeah, it is a surprise because you definitely don't notice no. that. Um, it's def it's integrated into the mm. aromatics and the, and the body mm. of that wine. Mm. So this is probably will be our last schoolers of that type, and probably our next one will be a Shiraz, uh, like a Shiraz Viognier, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly right. Mm. Mm. Okay. There's no questions no that questions. I'm seeing come through. Surely someone's got a question. Well, no. we're obviously being far too informative because mm. there's nothing nothing left to get. What about from the boss? Um, he's, he's there, he's in the background. In the background? He's, um, he's contributing. Okay. Can you please put that back? Yeah, put that back. Okay. Next one. Uh, Last yeah. pass. Here you go. Okay. 
So Lazy Bus uh, is, our, is our flagship terrace. Um, uh, Lay, named after the, the small geographical region that we're region, in? Which, which used to be a shy name. Um, used to be shy name. Actually, Lazy Pass is a large area, but the, 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 the actual proper name is, a, is a probably two kilometres away. Uh, and it's actually a small pass uh, where the Coven Co state uh, coaches used to would go north because we had a Coven Co station just across the road from us and uh, that would have been the back way up to the north up to the river the Tuca, Rochester and uh, and there's only a narrow a narrow just two small hills coming in uh, and crossing uh, crossing Ladies, Ladies Creek which is fronts our property and uh, the story goes that uh, the bush rangers used to was a good spot for the bush, bush rangers to hold up People. Coaches, and, yeah. uh, and obviously the uh, the men were told to stay there stick and them up. stick them up and put your, put your hands in your pocket and pull out all your change, and the ladies were to pass. Ladies, pass. They pass. So um, that's the bush ranger story of that why that came about. So that's uh, that's we've adopted that. Uh, Good one to tell the customers, the mm, consumers. Exactly. So uh, so that's uh, lace pass is our, is our premium always has been our flagship one. And it's generally one with uh, more dark fruits. Uh, that's been important to us. Dark fruits, well structured, um, well structured, well balanced uh, wines. Yeah. Um, uh, again, it's more about elegance uh, than 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 too much alcohol. Oh, this is about fourteen, actually fourteen point three. It's interesting. I, I thought it was a bit less than that. But, it's, um, it's contrary to what some people think. It has been getting a little bit warmer from year to year. Yes. So mm. um, the alcohol, the the grapes can ripen up okay. quite quickly. It I'm surprised getting, you actually. Lovely aromatics on this wine again. Yeah, I'm getting today. So as I said, it's we focus on that dark fruit, really um, black plum and um, blackberry. Uh, but today I'm getting a little bit more of a smoky <coughs> element. Maybe our <coughs> the Francis Ferrer barrels coming through. Yeah. Excuse my French. Mm. Um, on that oak barrel name, Francis Frere. Francois, 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 Frere. Francois, yeah, Frere. Frere. yeah. I think they always add a little bit of smoky yeah. te- uh, element, yep. and I'm also getting. Um... And of course, our wines need time to evolve, to, and they need a bit of a bit of oxygen, just to just to allow the, the tannins to, 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 to move, fill out, and also to uh, get some aromatics in those wines. You just um, hit on to another question that's arrived. Why do you keep the wines back for a number of years before releasing it? Uh, that's a really good point. And um, uh, generally, we feel over the years, whether it be via wine shows or just just our own palates, that um, our, our wines take got me. Our wines take three to five years to, to really, to, I believe, to come together, mm-hmm. and uh, so that we can we can hold them back. Uh, then by the time they are released. They've got a bit of age, which yeah. which I think people appreciate, but we've got you know tannins that are really supple, um, uh, and uh, wines that are well balanced. Yeah. It's, it's no, nothing stands out, not not disjointed, and I think that's important to us uh, to make sure that um, those wines are approachable. And our wine style is such that we looking for wines that we can consume early. Yeah. Hence, uh, hence we want to look at those approachable tannins, but we also want well structured wines that can last the distance. And we, from our own personal collection, we've got wines going back to 90, 90, 94. Uh, and uh, we've just recently had two, two, uh, one, two, three, four, five, and six, and they were holding up, all, all holding up beautifully. So, uh, so that's the answer to the question. Yeah. We, we want, we want our wines in top, top condition uh, for, for the consumers. And what's the point of making a wine if you can't drink it right away? Well, it's like a, I think wine should be enjoyed. That's right. And it's like a, the fortified, if you're making fortified uh, wine, that uh, my, my, my public philosophy is, if you're going to make one, why do we need to sit, sit around for 25 years for the tannins yeah. to, to become approachable and to, and to have that have the, the alcohol integrated? Well, I, I try and actually work that in straight away. And, and uh, I know you, Daniel hasn't taken the fortified, but, um, but I think that's a perfect example of making wine that people can consume now and enjoy now. Yeah. Um, and uh, not 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 have something that's incredibly disjointed um, and um, out of balance. Mm. Mm. Um, so on top, oh, dog's getting up. That's good. That means I can't chuck my chair anymore. Um, 
I think uh, on top of the all that dark fruit and then the smokiness, I'm also getting a, br a brininess, that mm -hmm. black olive sort of salty undertone. I think that's quite classic. Black, black olive, black olive, black olive, olive yes, yes, absolutely. Mm. So they, they say, our, our vineyard it goes back to, uh, it came in 92, our oldest vines, which were planted here before, go back to about 1987. So some of those, again, the vineyard that we're in front of, uh, there was a bit of Riesling and Tramler in there. So some of that rootstock goes back to 1987. And we've put, uh, we've put, a, we've put another Shiraz client on top of that. Um, so the game will, because we are a single vineyard, uh, which can, can, be, can, be, makes it, make, can be quite difficult. Uh, to gain more complexity, we've, we've got now about, I think, six, six different uh, Shiraz clones, uh, which we feel are, in, are an important, uh, important way of actually making our wines a lot exactly. more complex. We have another Shiraz, which we call the Beauregard Shiraz, named after my brother. And uh, its style is much more red fruit, uh, mm. sort of a bit more juicy, fleshy, yes. more, mm. more rounded, whereas the latest class, which we've just tasted, is a lot more driven. Um, the tan structures driving that wine, more linear style, and of course the darker fruit, like you mentioned. Mm. Um, you're gonna and like that palette will fill out with a little age too. Of course. Mm. We one thing that really hangs around with our wines is the sweet, that sweet fruit, really nice fruit flavours all, mm. all throughout the lifetime. Yes. Um, can Daniel Lambert get hold of any older vintages? Asks Carl. Not really. No, we don't. No. We just sell through it, and we keep yeah. a little bit in our personal cellar, which mm. we sort of showed you a little bit earlier mm. we're not a yeah we don't hold the, the, the wines back mm. but good to know there's some interest mm. and another one before we move to the gun picker how do you feel about organic production uh well I, I'm, I'm sorry well, i've got a bit of a negative view about it um uh, look I, I haven't had a decent organic wine yet um, but look i think i think wines do need some for preservative i, I don't know what the extent of organic means anymore there seems to be a lot of things yeah, very amber what it means true. but um i like to see wine that's fresh it's got good color i don't want to see an oxidized wine um, um and i think that um uh, I, i'm not i'm not i'm not a big fan of it from my perspective i mean it's good gardening isn't it organic yeah. you know using organic matter in the vineyard is great but you know we use sulfur and we use <laughs> copper in the vineyard and they're naturally occurring and elements. they're also um, used in organic wine, mm. so um, mm. yeah. yeah. So I'm invited and then we can start talking about what sort of not what sort of herbicide you're using and yeah. all that sort of stuff. So, um, but anyway, so I'm, I hope I haven't disappointed you, but I'm not a big fan. So let's move to the gun picker. Gun picker. Thanks for the question, though. Mm. Um, Gra uh, not Graham. Uh, yeah, it's Graham. Thank you for the question. Uh, if so we'll move to yeah gun picker, we'll yeah, move, yeah. Uh, gun picker uh, as we as hopefully we all know that the <coughs> Shiraz Cabernet blend is something came out of Australia a long time ago. It's probably we're one the, of the, the original. We're yeah, probably a very famous blend here. So we've decided uh, we've decided to do this quite some time ago. Uh, so we're taking the good part of a Shiraz, which is the, the not only the profile but the the mid palate fullness, and we're we're combining it with the the strength, the power, the tannin structure, uh, and, and, and the length uh, from, from a Cabernet. Yep. And hopefully, uh, this one here is 60-40, 60 Shiraz, 40 Cabernet, and hopefully what we're getting is a, a, a much a superior wine, something's a bit more complex, uh, and something that's, that's you're seeing those two components in that wine. Again, uh, I, I haven't had this for some time, but the, the, the aromatics are fantastic. Yeah. They, they really are Lovely nice and Lovely lifted, yeah. Um, Lifted. There's a nice mm. herbal element coming through. Not, you know, some Australia uh, Cabernet has a little bit of a reputation for being minty or eucalyptus. So we're not we're not in that realm. But the Cabernet does have a lovely herbal, dry mm. herb element that really adds to this um, flavour profile. Mm. And the tannins, the tannin structure is much firmer than our previous wines. And um, while this is approachable now, it's certainly going to uh, have, a, have have a, have a good li a life. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, this is one of our more robust wines, I say, mm. just because of that, that tannin structure, um, really that textured yeah. wine. And uh, of course, it's uh, well, you don't know that, but it's called the Gun Picker. And just quickly, a little bit about that. That was named after my, my late brother, uh, who, who uh, was always fun of the vineyard ah. at Vintage. 
a lot of fun and um, he used to bang on about how fast he was as a picker. He was the best, the best of it amongst everybody. Uh, he was and like 65 already, and so it was, that's probably not true. He often referred to himself as Edward Scissorhand, um, <laughs> but, uh, but he, pro he, he preferred to refer to himself at some point as a gun picker. And for those who are not familiar with the term gun, basically derived from uh, a farming, a sheep farming um, term, term uh, being a, when, you were, when you could shear a lot of sheep in a day, you are a gun, a gun shearer. So a gun picker has just been transferred to what's, what's been yeah, able to be so done in the vineyard. Just great at it. Just mm. you, you, you're a gun. You're a gun at something. So. That's it. Um, and so I'd ask that question as well. So it's good that you already okay. came onto it. Yeah. And just um, going back, totally agree was the comment on the organic wine. Yes. <laughs> so um, dodge, dodge on right. there. Um, can your wines be sold as vegan, Carl? No, they cannot. We use egg whites to fine our wines, um, which is dairy. Well, they're fine. You know, like uh, again, how do you, what sort of wine do you want to present to the public straight yeah. away? So you know, don't use egg whites. Have you know, some really firm, aggressive tannins, and you tell people put it down for twenty years. That's okay. But I'm, I prefer to see something that's far more approachable. Uh, so we and it also cleans the wine. There are up alternatives. Too. It lifts the colour. Yeah. Um, nothing harmful in we it. We prefer egg white than some of the other ones just for its gentle, yeah, it's gentle nature. Exactly. It's, it's natural as well. Mm. So, um, yeah, so we uh, you, we use a bit of that, yes. Mm. Uh, and that is those questions there. Okay. So I've done the gun picker. Okay. So we've got one more wine. After the wine, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about our accolades. Um, and then we'll leave you to your... Thursday, what day is it? Thursday night. Mm. So I'll just grab a couple of the new glasses. Um, if I could uh, introduce the, uh, the late harvest, uh, and that's something that, uh, as you appreciate, one doesn't do or had the opportunity to do every year. Um, this, I think, I've, this is my fourth, third or fourth uh, late harvest. Um, uh, I was able to, and I'd be looking for the opportunity to, to do another late harvest for the last five years. Uh, uh, fortunately, it came it came last year. Uh, there was a there was some um, some bionia that was a bit overcropped and uh, let go. Uh, so we we ended up buying about five ton, I think. Quite a bit. It was a bit, but um, but we left it on the one. I think when we saw it was about about fifteen and a half by May, which uh, I think the important part about late, late, anything that's late harvest is that you want huge concentration. And to get that concentration, you need to get the, the grapes right. And, um, and you can do that through, obviously, dehydration. So as the, uh, as the, as the, the growing process went on, uh, we started to, the vine started to defoliate, which is a bit of, a, you know, a bit of an issue. But we were able to, uh, we deliberately left it longer to get more desiccation. So I think we eventually picked out at about seven and a half, seven and a half bone made. Uh, I was able to get another a small ton of uh, Marsan, which was around 18, 8 and a half. Yep. And, and a touch of uh, Roussan was always equally as high. So this combination of two thirds uh, Viognier, one third Marsan and a dash of uh, Roussan. So um, we're very happy with this wine. We've got good concentration, more yep. marmalade, citrus peel. It's got a very good structure, good, uh, good acid uh, line. Um, I think that as time goes, that mid palate will become more full It'll get more unctuous or more luscious. Uh, the acid is good enough to continue yeah. to drive that finish. Um, and yes, it was a fun wine to make actually because we had so much. We had to split it across three um, ferment three tanks. Um, and yeah. they all fermented at different rates, and yes. a couple even started wild, which we let yeah. go for. A we had a we had a specific uh, wild yeast, uh, Saccharomyces. Um, wild um, yeast. Which we used in one, Copycat. yes, used in one of the blends, um, and then I think we had we had a small amount in oak just to uh, go a little bit more of that vanilla character, which I didn't want too much of. Uh, I was originally going to put a lot in it, uh, but I'm a little bit versed to um, some uh, oak and uh, dessert wine, so um, I just did enough to add a little bit more complexity. And this is very much a mm. fruit-driven style. Mm. Um, it's got that Fre more fresher style, sort mm. of marmalade, citrus peel, mandarin. Mm. Um, it's just real. It's very elegant. It is 130 grams of sugar, which I don't believe you can taste. It has the richness there, but 
it's it's not cloying. Mm. So it has a very clean finish. We, this is always the dark horse, mm. even at the salad door. Well, Dad shares with people um, that it's one of his favourite wines to drink and to make, and people are encouraged to taste it, mm. and they really do love it. It's mm. a big surprise. Mm. Um, yeah, it's a hundred. I'll just get your. It's a hundred and thirty grams. I think when you're making something something like this, or even a, as a sort of fortified, I think you've got to have sugar. Uh, but you, for me, uh, you, you should be able to see that as you do on the front of the palate, front of the tongue. Uh, but I don't think that the, the sugar should be intrusive, too intrusive on the on the finish of that wine. You don't want something yeah. that's really cloying, and I, and I think this wine uh, doesn't have that cloyingness. So you get the nice the sugar fix at the front, adds to the weight of the wine, adds to the complexity, but it finishes nice and clean and dry. I mean. The um, the TA is 9.4, yeah, which not, yeah. I don't, like, mm. it's in perfect balance. You mm. really don't, it doesn't stick out. Mm. It just cleans the palate and, and, and that'll And that'll dissipate over a bit of time, too. Yeah. That acid will drop off. But there's enough acid in that to, to keep that wine nice and fresh and, 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 and give it a good selling potential. And oh, I'd like to see this wine in 10, 10, 10 years' time. Easy. I think it'd be really, really smart wine. Yeah. We, we had an mm. older wine recently, which was gorgeous. And we were lucky to actually make a little bit of this. Sometimes you might only make... 150, 200 cases, yeah. but we, we made a we had made a good amount, and uh, that was really pleasing too. So um, yes, yeah, so therefore they they are the the uh, five wines. Just a couple more questions. Mm -hmm. Sorry to come mm -hmm. in. Um, the residual sugar, Graham, it's 130 grams. grams per litre. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's the same term you use in the UK. Yeah, it's just glucose. Yeah, glucose. that's what we use. Glucose. Um, and also Daniel Lambert has asked, are there are there many sweet Viognier in um, the region? I don't think so. I think there might be. Uh, there, there. Um, I might wine for an, another winery that I think has mm -hmm. might have a, a Viognier, uh, a little bit slightly, slightly uh, different, slightly different, different style. Um, I mean, you can get a lot of VA in uh, in those dessert wines, and uh, I don't like VA generally over normal wines, red wines. But you need sometimes you you can you need a, you need a bit more for a bit more complexity. Um, but uh, but I don't think there's much much more after that. It looks no, it's a little bit more mm. table wine. Yeah. But I think um, you know you've got to know how to sell dessert wine too. And yeah, it so happens to be a passion of yours, which is why we, <coughs> we, we enjoy making it. I do, and and I think you also understand the varieties. Uh, Beyond it particularly, uh, I know it's used for table wine, and I know in the Rhone that uh, they tend to be a bigger style. But it is a it is it, has, it can be quite broad on the palate. Yeah. Uh, so it, you know, if I was making a table Beyond you, I'd be Wanting to pick it at 12 and a half, no more than that, so that you keep, keep, keep maintaining the more, more freshness, um, aromatics, and, and profile of that Viognier, uh, but still maintain a nice acid line. Because yeah. as it ages, you're going to get a bit more broadness. Uh, and the same with, with the Masson, uh, you get more of that honey character. So the point being with the late harvest, uh, as, this, as this matures, that, that, that broadness you get from the Viognier and from the Masson will start to impact on the on the mid palate, yeah. uh, and add to that lovely opulence, the opulent uh, luscious mouthfeel. Are you talking about late harvest? I'm talking about late harvest. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, that was that the question. Yeah, that yeah. was good. Yeah. This is the only one I've seen globally, so like as in exporting. Oh, okay. Well, do you okay. mean as a Viognier? Well, look, well, we're certainly not. We're not a you know uh, Saturn. It's quite different to a Saturn, Saturn style thing. Yeah. But uh, but still, I think it's uh, it has its own style. Yeah. Absolutely, um, and um, I hear a number of accounts have already um, yeah I've already listed this. This is very good. So yeah. um, don't miss out. Mm. It, it is delicious. Now I don't. We don't want to hold you up. We're going to go have five more minutes, um, and I want to just do a bit of marketing because we love marketing, right? And I just want to uh, reiterate that we are a five-star winery with the the Halliday Wine Companion. James Halliday is our premier um, wine critic. In Australia, I'm sure you've heard of him. So we are a five-star winery, mm -hmm. and that's off the back of the um, next year's or the next vintage of Ladies Pass and Gun Picker, which both scored 95 points. Uh, so we'll, we'll have to release them once we've sold through this one. Uh, and our current range, we have seven wines above 90 points in the Holiday Wine Companion. Well, I think I made a comment to someone the other day that uh, we've been going 20, 28 years now, and 28th uh, uh, come out the 29th vintage. And I think uh, we've had probably three wines or two wines uh, less than 90 points yeah. in our in our uh, in our career, if you like. 
So I think that it's a testament to a consistency. Um, and I think that hopefully gives co our customers a bit more confidence uh, knowing that they've, uh, they've got a good, good, a good wine. Yeah. Mm. Um, we're one of the Holiday Wine Companions Turned Dark Horses in 2007, so yep. we're listed as a, as a highlight. And um, we've had some good trophy wins over the years. One was the Schoolhouse Red, which was the Shiraz mm -hmm. Viognier. There's a wine show in um, Melbourne and Sydney called Concorde de Vin. And that is was supported by the French Chamber of Commerce, judged all by the French trade sommelier uh, and wine judges. In our wine, um, the Shiraz Viognier had the best, was the best Shiraz, the best red wine, and the wine of the show. So um, you know you, we've got that heritage in our in our mm. portfolio, uh, and we've got you know countless certificates. This this room used to be a, a bit old fashioned. We had all the certificates lining pretty much every wall. And, and, and let's not forget to make a note that yeah. we're not here trying to big note ourselves. No, of course not. What we're trying to do is to, to give people confidence. Exactly right. Yeah. And confidence um, in the product and the confidence that you can pass on to your customers, mm. knowing that um, we have a long history of quality wines, which exactly. I think is very important. That's the point. Mm. Well, thank you. That's an amazing achievement. Well done. Thank you very much. Well, on that note, Yes. Um, unless any there's any final questions, we will say good night to you and, and we'll and start people, our day. And if and actually if people would like some more information mm -hmm. or, or think go to bed tonight and think of a question, they could email us. Email, yeah. Di directly, mm -hmm. and uh, we'd be more than happy to answer your question. Yeah, you can get us on Minari Wines at bigpond.com or just yeah. the Facebook's fine. Um, I also have a, a personal Instagram, India Minari Wines which is a little bit more behind the scenes than what we do here, a bit more in the winery, in the vineyard. Um, and I might add that I've got nothing. <laughs> You'll be able to see Panther in the Instagram, both Minari Wines and India Minari Wines. So do give us a follow. Yes. Uh, and we look forward to visiting you in the new year. Hopefully. And uh, so finally, thank you for, all our, for listening to, uh, to... Dad, our, Rave On. Rave On, yes, exactly. And... Um, we look forward to meeting them in person um, another another time of our life. And thank Daniel, of course. Yes, uh, thank you, Daniel Lambert Wines. For giving Lines. us the support. And uh, hopefully uh, we've uh, given told you a little bit about our history and our wines and our area. I so think we've done a good job. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you. I'll okay. just go All the best. Bye-bye.